presidential election and interference, uh, classified documents, hush money, and the January 6th in, in, like, insurrection. Those are the four I see right now. That's from Politico. That was as of June. <laughs> so there's... So he's got more since then. Yeah. How many has he gotten overall since he became... Since before, right before... Since he started running originally and then became president? I thought he got, like, indicted or... or uh, no. no, he was president. They couldn't indict him, right? They had to... Uh, uh, impeach him or something. Hell, he got impeached once, didn't he? I like the way you say you don't wire my dog up. Well, I, how am I <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here like sitting there, literally avoiding your dog biting. Did you see her sitting on me when she acting any kind of way? Uh, she doesn't love you like she loves me. Uh, Malone, come speak into the mic. <laughs> well, oh. Uh... <laughs> Politico just has the four. I'm not seeing. I can't see a fifth. Um, I'm not real. I'm well, I'm seeing online so far is just the classified four. documents thing. What happened there? That was him having all those classified documents in Mar a Lago and like in the shower, <laughs> like stuff like that. Maybe he was having a little well, personal know, time in the shower with the documents. Uh, you know, the toilet time is oftentimes one of the that's whenever most people do their reading. Yeah, except for the fact that, like, I, so I had a top secret clearance when I worked for the Department of Defense. You can't, moving, I don't care who you are, you can't take classified documents and just move them around and take them somewhere. And you, they have to be in, like, top secret documents have to be, can only be kept in certain facilities. Um. basically under lock and key and only certain people can see them. And then he had him at a resort, which was not secure in a place where people could access them publicly and then had them stored in a bathroom. And the best part is that he, um, and the, the, the thing that's always hard to, with these things is like, is about intent. Is like, did he have the intent to move them, or did he know that they were classified? Is like, that's the thing he keeps on playing with. Is like, did he, I didn't know I should like these were this. Now the former president is being protected by the Secret Service is not secured. Then you can't get that, in there. To, uh, do you you think that people aren't in Mar-a-Lago all the time that don't have a like? You think you it takes a clearance to get to Mar-a-Lago because that's what secure means. Oh, uh, if you need if you need a clearance, I mean, I mean secure is not. I mean the the uh, measures that they go through the the Secret Service to keep people from killing the president and the, the powers that they have at their disposal to, uh, to control. Uh, this is it. No, this isn't like you've got to understand that this is not like this isn't some hypothetical use of the word secure. This is a there's like a there's a document like there's documentation on how to store these documents. This documentation is hundreds of pages long. It's mind numbingly boring um, and it's explicit. You cannot keep a confidential secret or top secret document unless it meets such, 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 such requirements. Mar-a-Lago is not, like, secured. It's not a secure government facility. It is not a place that... Lawyer, mumbo-jumbo uh, <laughs> type of stuff. I mean, think about everybody, every other one of these presidents and all that, that... that gets caught doing something. I'm talking about they go, they do the opposite. They, they go as far as they can to, to kind of loosen up the, the, the rules and restrictions and all that to make sure that, that, uh, you know, whatever they're being accused of, it's not that big a deal, you know, it doesn't really amount to anything. Nothing serious really happened. When it's Trump, it's like the other way around. It's like, oh yeah, well, if you get down, the, the word secure has a, a very uh, 
definite meaning, hundreds of pages of, of documents to, to define this word, and Mar-a-Lago Mar didn't fit that. I, I will say that they did. <laughs> all, like, you're right. A lot of people that are higher up in, like, that were presidents and stuff like that, they violated it, too. And is Trump, Trump, the reason he's getting called out, as opposed to other presidents, is that when they came and they asked for the documents back, he wouldn't hand them over. They asked again, he oh. wouldn't hand them over. Well, that's the reason why they're going after him? You know, they Trump, had to get a warrant. Give, but you didn't give these things back. No, I'm telling you, they gave him an out. He he chose to get an indictment. No, that sounds like a load of horse crap. I can't believe that they gave him an out. They've been going well, after this guy nonstop for, what, <laughs> uh, eight, nine years now. They, they've how many times have they, the media con said, we've got him. I mean, this is it. This is the one. There was uh, the whole Russia investigation saying that he was colluding with Russia and all that. And that turned out to be a load of horse crap. Then there was the, the Ukrainian thing where he was uh, uh, conspiring to get the president of Ukraine to go, uh, go after Joe Biden. I mean, it was, it was just one after the other. Every, it seemed like every month they had a brand new thing that was supposed to be the thing that's going to get rid of Donald Trump. And all of a sudden, now, you know what? We wanted to give you an out. <laughs> well, you can believe it or not. I just know you, you want to look up the history of people who have gotten in trouble with classified documents. You can. How can you believe anything these people are telling you? How can you believe, like, I like I don't... Yeah, I I know it because I worked with classified documents and I know the shit that I would get into if I withheld classified documents when they came calling for them. The thing is, is they wouldn't give me a chance. If I was caught with classified documents when I was working in the Department of Defense, if they caught me or someone snitched on me and told me that I they had classified documents on me, I would be arrested, which is what normally happens. And then you that's it. Well, they asked. You're, uh, you're not one of these. Oh, that was pretty impressive. You see that dog loop there? I mean, it cleared everything. That was a. Did that, see that? That was agility. Anyways, um, uh, you're you're you, Ryan. You're not a uh, you're not a president or a senator or something like that. I'm not talking about. And and if you compare the treatment of. Donald Trump to any other person that's a major league figure in politics, I think it's quite obvious that he's being uh, he's being a uh, uh, he's being target, targeted. You know that, that someone somewhere doesn't like this guy. And they're trying to get rid of him. If not a whole lot of people, in a whole lot. If not everybody doesn't like him and just trying to get rid of him. He's an idiot. That's why. Well, you can. I mean, I'm not saying he is, but I mean, is Joe Biden not an idiot? Uh, yeah, I, you know. I can't believe that anybody ever voted for Joe Biden. I mean, this man's been in politics for for fifty something years. This guy's been—I mean, since before I was born, he was already a, a, a congressman, and this guy, or senator, whatever the hell he is. And the dude's been there forever. He's been vice president already for eight years. If there's a freaking problem in it, in this country, it's probably his fault, not something he can. It's not even—it's not even the president's fault, really. When he get right down to it. It's the fucking House and the Senate. They're the ones that call the fucking shots. Well, the president is just a puppet. He's, he's been a member of the House and Senate forever. Since before the two of us were born, that guy was there. It's all, it's the people you don't see that are controlling the show. And he is definitely, uh, he is an obvious puppet for these people. I mean, they all are. I don't know. I think that's what, I, I kind of think that that might be what they don't like Donald Trump about is that he's not. I mean, he, he might be it, doing his own thing. He might be, you know, filling, lining his own pockets or whatever the hell he might be doing. I don't know. But I, Malone, let's go. Just, let's go historically. Let's just talk historically. What has what has Reagan done and Bush done and Clinton done and Bush done and then Obama done and Trump done? They've all done these same things. They've all increased military spending. Yep. 
They've all increased border security. Yep. They well, have, they've all increased criminality. They've all re- reduced um, social welfare spending. They've <laughs> all done the same shit. Lock all of them. Up. Yep. They like to lock people up. They like to take away their welfare. And they like to spend money on defense. And it goes all to the same people. All of them. Now, occasionally, there's some people who want to do something different. Like Andrew Yang wanted to to give people universal wages. He got shot down real quick, along with a whole bunch of handful of people all at the same time. I wanted to talk about that. All of a sudden, Joe Biden comes in and he's a hero. But, yeah, we didn't hear about that. Remember when uh, (laughs) Bernie Sanders, didn't he want to do something similar? Bernie Sanders also, he said the word socialism, and that was the end of his universe. Yeah, because and they, they said socialism, they said communist. Yeah, well, they say communist. Either way, it, it doesn't oh, matter well, because it's... He said the word socialist. He actually talked about socialized health care, and he went about and got it passed. He did, though. Yeah, and all the things that Biden's trying to run on that to get him reelected are all things that other candidates have tried to do that are not currently elected because they are popular, but they don't get them elected. They are not things that Trump is doing because Trump essentially as, as dramatic as he is, which the media loves, they eat it up. That's why we see it all the time. They eat it up, but they, they love it. But essentially Trump does the same shit that Biden does. They do essentially the same thing. They just do different forms of it. I'm having a hard time swallowing it. There's something about what you just said that just doesn't sit all the way right with me. But I don't, I, you know, I don't even watch the news or pay any attention to politics at all. So I'm no expert on it. I ain't stretch the imagination. But I'm more concerned. I mean, who cares? What about? Let's talk about like the heat in prison and no air conditioning. That well, would be a great I topic, think, actually. Put the subject again. You know, or or people dying in prison because they're getting improper health care. That is actually, yeah. That or can't, or mm-hmm. how Texas Correctional Industries has so many, many, many different things that they sell to the public, and they use free inmate labor. We could definitely, you know, we can tie these things together right now because uh, we mentioned the, at- the slavery thing once before. We, yes, but here's a different aspect of it, as Dave was talking about with the heat. Um, we could talk about the fact that they're actually a new thing they're starting is that empl- they've done a study and they found that actually em- employers are now considering climate change in factoring it into their bottom line because they're finding that employees don't do as well when they're hot. And under extreme heat. Surprisingly. Don't do as well when they're hot. Yeah. So they actually found that it, like when they're under extreme heat for any amount of time, it reduces productivity by 30%. Well, you know, at TDC, they have a solution for this. They, it's, <laughs> it's that they're just not punishing you enough. Well, here's the thing. You can get graphics done. Cardboard boxes, custom printing, folders, laser engraved awards, signs, awards, and plastics. You can get janitorial supplies, brooms, brushes, mops, and wax, applicator soaps, and detergents. For garments and textiles, you can get apparel, bags, flags, and embroidery, bedding and mattresses, leather goods, linens and piece goods, windscreen and draperies. Oh, let's move on to furniture. This is all from Texas Correctional Industries. Chairs, podiums, courtroom, uh, furniture, uh, designs in wood. Dormline series, English series, fabric samples, chair glides, molded plastics, flip text lounge, great gift ideas. Man, it just goes on. Modular furniture, office systems, sit stand workstations for metal. You can get detection and security, dump truck and tarps, accessories, fencing, kitchen and food service supplies, miscellaneous. Man, it goes on and on. Aluminum bleachers, auditorium seating, braille transcribing, bus renovation, computer recovery, furniture refurbishing. Wow, that's crazy. This is all things provided to you by Texas Correctional Industries. 
which is using inmate labor. Yeah, I worked for them. I know. Yeah. Hell, I built the machines at some of those things. And they have fucking showrooms. Are you kidding? They have a showroom in Huntsville. Oh, yeah. Wow. And one in Austin. Uh, at least 41 people have died uh, in Texas prisons this year. That's as of August, this, according to the Texas pr- Tribune. Alone, 41 people have due to heat. Due or, to heat. That, does not, that doesn't surprise me. And I mean, people die every... That's the weirdest thing about, about Texas prisons, too, is that I mean, y'all have been there, so y'all know. As soon as the weather starts to turn a little cool, everybody will freak out about the heaters getting turned on. They'll send maintenance people. They'll start oh buying God. and everything. And they'll mm-hmm. bring the heat back up to 98 degrees inside the building again to stop it from being 73 degrees inside in the fall. And I, I mean, it is the most insane thing. And no one has ever died in TDC from the cold. No one ever woke up no. and asked, hey, what happened to a bay? Well, it froze to death last night. That never happens in, T- in TDC. But for some reason, that is a priority. All the money that they have on any kind of a, a environmental thing is going to be directed towards heating. But the 44 people die in a year and they don't care. I mean, they yeah. know in 2011, that heat wave that they had that was similar to this one, it was very close. Uh, then we didn't even have water coolers in the, uh, uh, outside, I mean, in the day rooms, or no one was bringing us cold water to the cells. No one was, uh, they didn't have any fans on the runs or anything like that. They only had like two fans in a day room. And it was, uh, it, it was, re- and every day, Warden Mossberger, they started record, they were reporting that they had brownouts in the city of Houston due to uh, air conditioning use, electrical ex- excessive electrical use due to the air conditioning needs or refrigeration needs. And so to help the city of Houston, Warden Mossberger, cut the, locked, every, locked all the inmates up at 12 o'clock every day and kept us locked up from 12 till 5 in our cells with the power off, cut the power off on the unit. So not only did, even if you did have your own personal fan that you could buy, they cut it off where you couldn't even use it. That happened for three months straight in 105 degree, 105 and up temperatures for a straight 90 days. Yeah. Unbelievable. Everybody was walking around with heat rashes from um, that, that ran the uh, course of their entire body. You just you just drenched in sweat constantly. Yeah, heat rash. That's people don't even know what heat rash is. Well, <laughs> like because like with like that's not not a problem most people even understand that when you sweat so much and there's nothing like and you're just constantly sweating, you your will body get a rash will from it. Soaked. And sweat. I mean, you're like wet all the time. You're never ever a moment that you're dry. For three months. It's not good. Not good for your skin. Right. And I have sensitive skin to begin to begin. Ask my mom. She <laughs> will go on and on about how I could whenever I was a baby, they couldn't use the regular disposable diapers because of my fair Irish skin needing a uh, not being able to be wet for any period of time. Oh, it was bad. I had to hand wash your your cloth diapers. She's going to hear this and be so upset. Well, I'm going to shut up all ahead. Thank you, Mom, <laughs> for. Um, uh, I really appreciate so the there's between 2001 and 2019, there are 271 deaths. In Texas prison due to heat. 2001 and 2019? From in that 19 year period, 271 have died. Wow. Yeah, all the way until 2011, they didn't even heed heat advisories. I mean, they're like, I can remember. And according to on August 21st, uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice says 
No prisoner has died from the brutal heat in its facilities since 2012. <laughs> of course, they're going to say that. Yeah, 2000, uh, uh, that scene I was describing happened in 2011. It was brutal. And people, people did uh, perish from the funniest thing about that, that year, every piece of refrigeration and, and, and uh, air conditioning on the whole entire unit uh, went out. They couldn't compensate. It could not keep up with the heat. So, you know, places where the guards congregate or, or the office areas where the wardens and secretaries and all that are, are air conditioned on, unit, on the prison unit. The education department is, is uh, also uh, uh, air conditioned. The infirmary is air conditioned and the chapel. Uh, the where else is uh, air, is there any other air conditioning? Other School, thing? church. That's education. Uh, and that's the chapel. Yeah, and then education, and yeah, and then uh, right. what, depending on where you work, I was always a clerk, so we had air conditioning. Where they have separate uh, all the places I already mentioned. Dave's uh, second in. He's he's confirming what I said. And well, all that, a, all those places, they all all the air conditioning went out. The refrigeration in the in the kitchen, all their vaults, all their freezers, everything, everything went out. And they were moving refrigerated trucks in uh, to every uh, to house all the food and everything that needed to be kept cold, the meat and whatever. And every two weeks, they'd have to bring in another truck because those trucks would go out because they couldn't keep up with the heat. The heat it was that bad. The infirmary, the same infirmary that just when this whole thing started, everybody was going in there with the heat rashes and was complaining that they needed some kind of medication or something uh, uh, because their, um, you know, their 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 skin is uh, slothing off and it's it's horrible, itchy, whatever. It's a mess. And uh, they were saying there was nothing. There was they were saying that there's not heat rash. They were telling us that it's some kind of a uh, the, that the uh, some kind of new laundry detergent that they're using, and that it must be a laundry detergent thing, because everybody has it. That was the, that was their reasoning in the environment. Well, everybody has this, so it must be due to some other kind of it, uh, factor, other than the fact that y'all all are being housed outside of air conditioning. And then, whenever it went down, when the AC went down in the infirmary, the same infirmary that had no problems with us going to work and telling us there's nothing wrong with us and all this other stuff. The nurses and the staff quit. They wouldn't come in. They brought in swamp coolers, too, for the infirmary. So the infirmary was actually in like a balmy 86 degrees in there. And even that, they couldn't they couldn't handle. It was dangerous for them to be, to be in that environment. So they had to, they would they refused to come into work. Hypocrisy. It must be nice to not have to, you know. They should <laughs> See, they can detect. I mean, let us just take. We're just gonna let you out for the day, so you can have some uh, air conditioning. They can declare their own, their own danger. They're the infirmary staff. They can say, "Oh, this is too hot of an environment for us to work in." <laughs> but when it came to us, who we were living in uh, you know, twenty-something degree higher temperatures, and all, I mean, we don't even get to go home at the end of the day like they do to an air condition. How about there? So I've been. I was at Pack Two, and it was in the winter time, and these. People would not turn the heaters on in the dorms unless it got below forty-two degrees. Shit, that, that sounds like heaven. <laughs> but it's like, and it, people don't realize. People drive by, like, you know, like a uh, holiday unit. You know, they're driving, you know, like down forty-five, and they see all these these buildings. And from the outside, you would think that that building is air conditioned, right? That big ass metal building, but it's right. not. It's just, it's just a, a hot box. It's an oven. It's literally. A hot those red brick buildings too, the cell blocks, man, that, that strength on you. In the middle of the night, you can walk over to one of those walls, and it's just like like a like a red brick pizza oven. The, yep. the, the reason why they use those red bricks is because they retain heat. So even in the middle of the night, these these walls are still hot as hell, and they're and they're just right. I mean, you can just feel it at a distance. The bars, I can remember. You, I mean, all the middle. And at night, you'd grab a bar and you'd be like, "God damn, this thing's hot." Everything. And even like coming out, like coming in from like outside wreck. You come in from outside where it's like it's a little windy. You got some air. That's hot outside, but then you come inside and it's stifling because it's just yeah, right. There's nothing and, that can yeah, no and, movement. And, and I was oftentimes telling people, "Don't they have OSHA standards?" I mean, about I mean, I was like always thinking to myself, "Oh." <laughs> 
Isn't there like some kind of OSHA standard that, that about uh, heat? I mean, there's, there's only so much of a temperature that they can that right, a, but the, the employer can work you in, and they got us in a kitchen. They don't care with no air conditioning. I mean, imagine cooking. It's already 107 outside, and now you're going to go cook something. Not just cook something, but cook something in a giant cauldron. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, the female guards, the women, the boss ladies, whatever the heck you want to call them, I mean, they were dropping like flies that year. They they couldn't stand. It. That was that was the, where the real damage was being done was with uh, female employees. They had thirty five employees uh, that reported heat related illness uh, this year too, on top of the forty one. Well, now you know they you get the water coolers, and then you have like. The cool area where people can go to or yeah, whatever. Areas, but they, didn't have any of they didn't have any of that. You know, like first time I went to prison, there's like, you know what? They're like, hey, I need respite. Now, fuck you. You know, you just got, you were just, it didn't matter. And there was no water coolers. You got water out of the sink. There was no ice, you know, uh, yeah. ice jug in the dorm. That, the, it didn't happen. The SSIs weren't walking with, with pitchers of ice water to a fast mountain. And I'm glad they're doing that. I mean, that's not, I mean, it's, it might, that's probably saving lives, but it's still no substitute for air conditioning. No. The shakedown was produced in luxurious Longmont, Colorado. And Vado Elements provided our theme song, Shakedown. If you want to support us, you can find Shakedown shirts, hoodies, and more at waywardpress.com. That's W-A-Y-W-O-R-D-Press.com. If you have ideas for future episodes or cool stuff you want to see us make, let us know in the comments on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at at Get the Shakedown. <laughs>